So I found this fun article on CNBC to try this 30 day money challenge to become successful with your finances. And I thought I'd give it a shot and create this beast of a video. And I think the intent of this article is good, but it doesn't give you a complete breakdown of how to accomplish them. You can choose to do this 30 day money challenge with me if you want to. And I'll leave the article link in the description below. And I also put chapters in this video, so feel free to navigate them as you wish. And day number one is to identify your money goals and values. This was important for me to figure out the why behind my financial independence movement. I don't save money just because I like to save money. I love to spend money too because I want to have that balance between the two. You need to take some time to think about what's important to you. To me, traveling the world and spending time with my family is what matters the most. What also matters to me is that my money lasts throughout my retirement and early retirement. I want to retire early at the age of 45 so that I can travel the world, meet new people, and do things that I've never done before. And by the time I turn 59 and a half, I want my investments to last until the end of my time so that my grandchildren, children, and many generations after that never have to worry about money for college or anything else they need. And the article says to find your own values. And I couldn't agree more. Your parents or friends might have told you that going to college and buying a house is the only way to achieve your financial freedom. I didn't go to college and I turned out just fine. Think about what matters to you and not what you think should matter. And day two is to find an accountability buddy or a partner. And this is a really good one because I have a small circle of people that I trust that I can discuss my finances with. My wife is one of my accountability partners because we work on our finances together. And we actually have a family financial meeting at the end of each month to talk about what we're going to spend in the next month and how much we're going to save or invest. We don't give each other permission to spend money, but we come to an agreement if we have to make large purchases. We don't fight about finances, and that's probably how we're succeeding in building our wealth. Communication really matters in every relationship, and avoidance is not the answer. If you're not married, I encourage you to find someone in your family or friends to keep you accountable with your saving and spending. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have an accountability partner. And don't forget that you can download all of my financial resources for absolutely free by visiting firesetcher.com slash resources. You should also check out my Firesetcher shop if you're curious about what equipment I use to grow my YouTube channel from 700 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers in a year by visiting firesetcher.com slash shopping. And day three is to open a high yield savings account or HYSA. Look, there are a lot of you got your money parked with Chase, Wells Fargo, or Bank of America that pays you 0.01% in interest. There are online banks like Ally that pay you 4% in APY at the time I'm recording this video in July, 2023. This video is not sponsored by Ally, but you're missing out on all the interest and earnings. So if you had $10,000 saved with a bank like Wells Fargo that pays you 0.01% in APY, they're only going to pay you $1 in interest that whole year. If you had $10,000 saved with a bank like Ally Bank that pays you 4% in APY, they're going to pay you $400 in interest. I am not sponsored by Ally Bank or any banks. Just Google HYSA or high yield savings account. And if you decide to open one, just make sure that it is FDIC insured. Now that you have a high yield savings account, day four is to start saving for a short term goal. And it can be an emergency fund, travel fund, wedding fund, a hobby fund, or home improvement fund. You can start small and work your way to get to the goal. I have a video that teaches you how to properly allocate your cash savings using a high yield savings account. And I'll link that video in the description below. And if you have any debt, Day number five is to figure out how long it'll take you to get out of the non-mortgage debt. And if you're getting ready to retire, or if you're in your late 40s or in your 50s, you should figure out how long it'll take you to pay off your mortgage because you want to start reducing your risks by reducing your liabilities. And I just did a live stream a few weeks ago on how I paid off almost $110,000 in consumer debt back in 2014 to 2016 in just two years by using my spreadsheets and you can download them for free by visiting firesetcher.com slash resources. You can also go to my YouTube playlist named Debt Free Journey because I have all the videos about how I paid off my debt fast. And I also encourage you 
to join my private Facebook group or become a member of my channel because I have a public live stream and private group session every other Wednesday to talk about all kinds of financial independence investments and early retirement strategies. You can visit firesetcher.com slash pricing or firesetcher.com slash coaching to schedule your financial coaching session. And day six is to start building an emergency fund. If you have any non-mortgage debts like student loans, car loans, or credit card debts, I only recommend that you save for a rainy day fund to cover any immediate expenses. And that's typically between uh, anywhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars. Once you have your debt paid off, my rule of thumb is to save at least six months of expenses in your emergency fund. If you're the sole provider in your household, you should have at least three months of your expenses. If you and your spouse have both income and if one of you becomes unemployed, the other spouse can still provide sufficient income to pay for your expenses. If you're getting ready to retire, I usually recommend saving at least 12 to 18 months of expenses in your emergency fund or bear market fund. I encourage you to check out this video about my $370,000 bear market fund for early retirement linked in the description below. And day seven is to calculate your credit utilization ratio because it accounts for 30% of your credit score. When I had $110,000 in consumer debt, all five of my credit cards were completely maxed out at $47,000. My credit utilization ratio was at 99%. Don't do what I did because I had a credit score of 570. What you typically want to do is to maintain less than 30% of your credit line to have a better score. But the reality is that you want to maintain less than 5% to get an excellent credit score. And you should never carry a balance on your credit card. And I check my credit scores on Experian about once a month, and it's completely free for anyone to sign up. You have the legal right to check your credit scores for free. I never have to pay for mine. This screenshot from Experian shows that my credit usage is about 2% with a total debt of $170,524. But out of that $170,000, $150,000 or $160,000 of that is with my mortgage debt. And I've been non-mortgage debt free since 2016. And I plan to keep it that way for the rest of my life. And I pay the full balance of every credit card I have every single month. And that's why my credit score is 835. And day eight is to audit your subscription services. This is the quickest and easiest way to reduce your expenses to pay down your debt fast. Let me show you my current subscription uh, services for my personal use. We have the Disney bundle with Hulu, ESPN Plus, but we get it for free because we have our cell phone service with Verizon. They get it for free. And we also have Peacock, uh, which we get it for free because we have an American Express Platinum card that gives it to us for free. And you can use my affiliate link in the description below. And I have an app that's called Talking Parents for $9.99 a month, which is a great app if you're co-parenting because it keeps all of the records. And I have an identity theft monitoring service with Xander for $12.90 per month. I think everyone needs this uh, nowadays to make sure their identities don't get stolen. And I have Netflix for $15.49 a month. I have HBO for $15.99 a month. And I have Apple One for $32.95 a month, which includes Apple Music, iCloud storage up to 2000 gigs, uh, and Apple TV. I don't do any gaming, but Apple TV has some really good shows. And I also have YouTube TV for $72.99 a month to watch CNBC and Bloomberg. I also have Nintendo Switch uh, for $3.99 a month and PlayStation 5 uh, subscription for $119.99 a year. So if I add everything up, that's a total of $2,091.59 a year or $174.29 per month. Am I gonna cut any services? Not at this time because I don't have any debt. And day number nine is to automate your savings. All of our savings accounts are completely automated. We have an emergency fund that is maxed out, so we're not putting any more money in it until we need to replenish it. And we have a discretionary fund that we only use for uh, anniversary, birthdays, concerts, and any sporting events. And we also have a travel fund uh, that we de automatically deposit our money into every two weeks so that we can travel stateside and overseas. Out of sight, out of mind is the only way to do it. 
And day 10 is to evaluate your car insurance coverage. My wife and I need to do this after our six month renewal coming up in August. We have uh, Progressive right now. We chose to pay every six months instead of every month because they're giving us a 15% discount for paying the insurance in full. And we're paying about 330 bucks every month in car insurance. My plan is to shop around for other car insurance, but it's actually expensive to get one in Vegas because Nevada is ranked top 10 worst drivers in the United States. And there are two main reasons why car insurance premiums have gone up so much over the year. According to the latest consumer price index data, uh, car insurance rates went up by 17% year over year. And it's not just because of inflation, but there have been more car accidents in 2022 and 2023. Maybe people forgot how to drive after the COVID lockdown or something like that. But the other factor is that uh, the increased prices for vehicles and auto parts due to supply chain issues. So the insurance companies ended up paying more to get the cars repaired or replaced. So the major car insurance companies like Geico, Allstate, um, Progressive had to raise insurance premiums because they were bleeding money from car repairs and replacements. I still encourage you to shop around and get as many quotes as you can to lower your uh, insurance bill. And day 11 is to check your credit score. You should check all three credit bureaus to find out what your credit scores are. As I said about day seven, don't pay for any of your credit scores. Okay, they're absolutely free. And I go to Experian.com and they don't charge me anything to check my credit scores. And checking your credit score uh, is not just so that you can borrow more money, but to make sure that you don't have any negative information in there. I actually have my credit frozen so no one can get a loan or a new credit card under my name. You can do that for your children too, so your children's credit don't get hacked or stolen by some, uh, some strangers. Anyway, you can freeze your credit with one bureau and then it automatically freezes the other two. And I encourage you to do it if you're not looking to buy a house or a rental property in the near future. And day 12 is to make the most of your subscriptions. This CNBC article says uh, to make the best out of, out of an Amazon Prime subscription. I personally don't subscribe to something if I don't keep up with it. But one thing you should subscribe to is my channel because I have so much awesome personal finance content that you'll get a lot out of. And day 13 is to fund your health savings account or HSA. My wife and I dollar cost average our HSA contributions into an S&P 500 index fund every single week. HSA is actually our number one investment vehicle before the Roth IRA and 401k because it comes with quadruple tax advantages and we can contribute to the HSA in pre-tax dollars and the investments and dividends will grow tax-free and we can take the money out tax-free as long as we use it for qualified medical expenses. I encourage you to check out my HSA playlist to watch the HSA videos because I promise you that you'll get a lot out of those videos and I'll make sure to link them in the description below. And day 14 is to sign up for a personal finance newsletter and I have several subscriptions that I read on a daily basis. The Wall Street Journal, uh, CNBC, Business Insider and Bloomberg. But my favorite one, of course, is the newsletter I send out every single week to my email subscribers, and you can become one of them by visiting firesitcher.com slash resources. And day 15 is to start investing in the stock market. And you can do that with your employer-sponsored retirement account like the 401k, 403b, 457, or TSP. You can start investing with your Roth IRA, HSA, and taxable brokerage account. Uh, when it comes to the stock market, it's all about how much you contribute and how early you do it. The longer you wait, the shorter time you'll have for your money to, uh, to grow and compound. And if you're wondering how to prioritize your investments, I always, always prioritize the employer match with the 401k. If my employer contributes 3% of my income, if I personally contribute 6% of my income, then I start with a minimum of 6% contribution rate to my 401k, 403b, 457, or TSP. The next step is to max out the HSA if you're eligible for the high deductible health plan with your employer. Then I max out the Roth IRA and then try to max out the 401k. The point of this day is that the sooner you invest, the better. How much you contribute will matter more than how much you make in return from the stock market in the long term. And day 16, is to update your income with your credit card company. 
increasing your credit limit is just to lower your credit utilization ratio and it's not to increase your spending. This is a good way to increase your credit scores. If you don't use a credit card at all, then just simply skip the step. But keep in mind that if you're still in credit card debt, make sure to prioritize paying off the balances off, uh, paying off the balances first before even thinking about increasing your credit limit. Just because you have a $10,000 limit on your credit card, it doesn't mean that you should spend $10,000. You should only spend what you can afford and live below your means. Credit cards can become very dangerous if you're not responsible for them. And day 17 is to try reverse budgeting. I actually do this budget strategy by paying myself first. What this means is that you're prioritizing saving and investing your income over paying your expenses. I wouldn't do this until you're completely debt free though, with the exception of your mortgage. But basically, after you have your savings and investments set aside, then the rest of the money is basically your FU money. And I encourage you to check out this video about how I'm saving 70% of my income this year and link in the description below. And day 18 is to put your tax refund to good use. I have to disagree with this step because if you're getting a large tax refund next year, then you're essentially giving the government an interest-free loan. And if you get $5,000 in a tax refund, you could have parked that money in a high yield savings account making 4% in interest. So you're potentially missing out on $200 in total interest. If you invested that $5,000 in a tax refund in an S&P 500 index fund, that's 16% in return or about $800 in total earnings that you missed out on at the time I'm recording this video in July 2023. But if you're not ready to invest yet, but you're put your tax refund into an emergency fund or pay down your debt, what you should really do is adjust your federal tax withholding to adjust how much you want your employer to withhold your taxes this year. And you should watch this video about the five major tax mistakes to avoid linked in the description below. And day 19 is to take a step towards eliminating your debt. And this article is suggesting you use a debt uh, consolidation loan to pay off your debt faster or transfer your high interest credit card to a new credit with a 0% introductory balance. But I have to tell you, from my experience as a financial coach, people slow down on paying down debt because their perception is that with a consolidation loan, they have a lower interest rate and a longer term to pay off the debt. You want to pay off your high interest debts as soon as possible, like your clothes are on fire. Stop investing because paying 25% on credit card interest while making 10% on investment return means you're still losing money. It's all about your behavior and intensity to pay down your high interest debt. Get it going and start paying it down. And day 20 is to reevaluate your prescriptions. And I do this all the time for my daughter's asthma medication. Uh, GoodRx uh, has some really good coupons to cut down the cost. I go to Costco Pharmacy because the cost for prescriptions there is relatively uh, lower than the other ones that I've been to. And day 21 is to diversify your income streams. And I love this step because I get my dividend income every quarter from the stocks that I've been investing in for several years. I get interest payments from the high yield savings accounts that we get, like our emergency fund, annual expenses fund, and travel fund. Let me know in the comment section down below how many streams of income you currently have. And the current labor market allows you to choose so many side hustles that pay really well. And if you truly want to build your wealth, start a home business because you can write off your home office from your business income depending on your tax structure and ever since i started my youtube channel in late 2021 it's really nice to earn some passive royalty income on the videos i made in the past these videos are on there forever and people always search for the how-to videos and i get monetized by both youtube and facebook so it's really nice to have that royalty income every month if you're looking to start a youtube channel make sure to check out the video equipment i use to go live and make these videos by visiting firesuchet.com shopping and clicking on the Amazon affiliate link. And day 22 is to tackle a financial task you've been avoiding to do in the last year. And I really like this one because you've probably been putting off rolling over your 401k from a previous job. And I've had several clients asking me the correct process to move 401k to the IRA. One thing to keep in mind is that if you quit your job between the ages of 55 and 59 and a half, then it's probably best to keep the money in the 401k because you can withdraw your 401k early 
under the rule of 55. There are several factors other than your age that you need to consider before you roll your 401k over to your IRA. So I encourage you to check out these two videos about the rule of 55 and the 401k rollover link in the description below. And day 23 is to review your rewards credit cards. This is only for the people who don't have any credit card debt or carry any balance on their credit card month over month. I probably use American Express Platinum more than anything else because of the rewards that come with it um, is pretty incredible. And if you go back to day eight, I get Peacock for free. TSA pre-check for free and I get these discounts in the reward section. And when I travel for work or pleasure, I use Chase Marriott strictly for Marriott hotels to earn extra points so that I can get three free nights of hotel stay every year. And when I book airfare, I only use Chase Southwest to book Southwest airline tickets because about twice a year, I get to travel for free and get free A1 to A10 uh, upgrades using the Southwest premium credit cards. And every time we travel to Disneyland, Disney World, or go on a Disney cruise, we use the Chase Disney credit card to get a discount or more rewards. And there are some credit cards that I don't use anymore, but I, I do use them once a year on Amazon gift cards so the banks don't cancel the credit cards on me. And I don't want those credit cards canceled because I've had them uh, for over 18 years. I just use it to buy a $10 Amazon gift card or something like that to keep the credit card active. Once my other credit cards get to about 15 or 20 years, then I'm going to cancel these cards that I don't use anymore to maintain my credit scores uh, between 800 and 830. And day 24 is to reassess the funds you currently own. What this means is that you should look at your stock portfolio and find out what your current out uh, allocations are between stocks and bonds. Now I can't give you any specific advice on your allocation strategy because every one of you is different in age and risk tolerance. I'm 36 and very risk tolerant and my stock allocation is 100% stocks. I don't have any of my investments in bonds, but you may be 55 years old and more risk averse. You also don't want to be too risk averse to the point where you don't make any investment returns, right? You also don't want to be too uh, risk tolerant to the point where you're too exposed to risks and potentially losing money if you're close to your retirement age. So you probably don't want to have 100% of your money in crypto or options contracts, right? And if you're close to your retirement age, I encourage you to get in touch with your local financial advisor or planner to take a look at your stock portfolio. And day 25 is to calculate your savings rate. This is my personalized savings rate calculator, which you can download for absolutely free by visiting firesetcher.com slash resources. Your savings rate should be at least 25% of your gross income if you wanna retire and maintain the same lifestyle you currently have. If you can only invest 15% of your income towards retirement, then you're gonna to have to reduce your lifestyle uh, going into your 60s or your 70s. You may not be saving 25% right now because you're paying too much on your mortgage. You may be spending too much on takeout food or hobbies. These are the things that you wanna keep an eye on when you do your budget. But I'm personally saving anywhere between 60 and 70% of my income because I'm debt free and I keep my expenses low. And day 26 is to score some discounts on things you're already buying. I'm all about reducing my expenses even when I'm a millionaire. If you're in college, you can score some education discounts with Apple and several other stores. If you're in the military, you can get a discount on online uh, shopping by uh, using the ID.me verification. You can even get a senior discount, a loyalty program discount, referral discount, and email subscription discount. I don't think I ever pay for anything in retail price. So make sure to do some research before you buy anything. And what I usually do is leave something in the cart for at least three days. And if I'm still wanting to buy it, then I'm gonna keep doing some research to get some price comparisons. And day 27 is to increase your 401k contribution. And I wanna show you my 401k calculator real quick. And let's say your annual income is $50,000 at the age of 25 with a 2% average annual income increase if you increase your 401k contribution just by 1% annually, you're still gonna have over a million dollars invested by the time you turn 58 years old. And that's with a 7% average annual return from the stock market. You can download this spreadsheet by visiting firesetcher.com resources. And if you're having a hard time seeing this, you can always pinch on your YouTube app 
or on your device and you can pinch the screen and enlarge it so you can see it better. And I also made a video about the, uh, the 401k calculator by age and I'll link that video in the description below. But keep in mind that if you're still in debt, I wouldn't raise the 401k contribution until you pay off your non-mortgage debts. Ever since I paid off my debt back in 2016, I've been maximizing my 401k contribution every year. You can auto increase your 401k contributions every year by a few percentage points, but you, you can start maximizing your retirement contributions so you can retire earlier. The decision is yours. And day 28 is to look into dividend stocks. And I love dividend investing because it's actually one of my early retirement income streams. Another fun fact is that there's a way to live on just dividends and pay zero dollars in taxes. I already have a goal to make at least $100,000 a year in tax-free qualified dividend income when I have at least $2.5 million invested. I have a complete video playlist for the dividend investment strategy, so I'll put that link in the description below. And day 29 is to create a conscious spending plan. The article tells you to be conscious of your spending, saving, and investing. What I would like to add is to be more intentional with your savings and spending. And I just spent $4,000 on an M2 Mac Studio to speed up my video editing process, live streaming, and video chatting with my private clients. And I was being intentional with my spending because I knew it was going to make a tremendous return on investment by purchasing an expensive computer that could speed up my productivity. We also just went to Disney World with the intention of spending $1,000 total at Disney World for two days. Because we were being intentional, we didn't carry a balance on our Disney credit card. We paid a full amount after enjoying our vacation at Disney World. You have to learn to change how you behave with your spending because if you don't, you're gonna end up going into debt. And day 30 is to pick up a personal finance book. And I started with The Millionaire Next Door by Dr. Thomas Stanley. That's behind me on my dis uh, display shelf. That book changed my life and how I looked at wealth, debt, and basic personal finances. And if you wanna know more about how I plan to achieve financial independence and retire early, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.